Welcome to another episode of Geek Men and the Masters of the Thunder Nerds. I'm Dustin. I'm Bo. And I'm Zach. Hey. How got, y'all doing tonight? Yeah. Got a cool guest, but real quick, because this is uh, related to our guest. I went to a comic book shop today because I was getting my niece a birthday gift. And I got a couple of neat things, but I spotted this. I was like, well, I had to buy it because he's going to be on the show. But I found me a classic nightman. Malibu. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I was like, "Well, that's coming home with me." Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's bring on our guest. <laughs> it's why I never motion. It's the one and only rolling man. What is up, Thunder Nerds? Classic Nightman, huh? Classic Nightman. This is oh issue my. number 19. Oh my. I, I edited that one. I don't know if you popped it open yet. I figured you I figured you had you had your hand in it somewhere. I see uh C Zachary's name on it too. Yep, Dean Zachary. It probably inked by either Thomas Formonti or Jeff Whiting. I can't recall. Ooh, we can't wish you crack it open this thing because yeah, I bought it for fun. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, okay. I had to pick it up. It's nice. Yeah. Man, you're always fun of the good stuff. I love shopping in the dollar boxes. Uh, it's it's so much fun. I came on with so much random stuff. Like, if it's eccentric or weird. <laughs> let's, let's see who did ink this. This was inked uh, Bruce uh, McC- McCorkendale. Oh, McCorkendale. Okay, yeah. Bruce McCorkendale. There's the right. flash page. On. Yeah. That's good. Oh, man. So I can't nice. wait to read that later. For I just, I just love buying the old retro comics, man. Yeah, <laughs> just well, too good. it's probably not too difficult to uh, to uh, procure yourself a run of Nightman in the in the dollar boxes. I you know, I have actually been contemplating trying just trying to get like collect all of Malibu. Oh really? Yeah. Now I, the Ultraverse would be fairly easy um, unless you're looking for some of like the rare. Oh, this is I need this version of it but just finding it would be pretty easy some of the um some of them like uh like maybe men in black might be a little more difficult to find yeah you know um just because they made movies and so people bought them up thinking that they had value and now you can't really find them uh, i haven't seen men in black in the in the dollar boxes in in, in a long 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 time so yeah, I'm sure the popularity of that movie really. I, I, that was something you guys were talking about, and that I had asked you a question about how they adapt comic books in the movies, and some of them are drastically different from the comic books. Oh my gosh, uh, I, I have. Um, well, I don't know where it is now. I still have. Um, I can't remember if this is one of the things you and I talked about or not. But you know, Cat and Mouse was uh, uh, optioned. Yeah, that um, story. <laughs> yeah, so so you've heard that story. Be talking about all the changes they made. Yeah, you should. Yeah, you should go over it for people. Uh, who uh, yeah, it. yeah. So, uh, so long story short, Cat and Mouse is a, a basically a, a duo, male male female duo. Cat is the, mm. the dude, Mouse is the guy. Um, some of my inspiration. Uh, a lot of folks, you, you guys may not be old enough to remember her, a show called Moonlighting. Um, no, I remember that one. Yeah. But but uh, but there was a you know there was kind of the romantic. I would say uh, of a m- more modern story, bo- uh, a bone. Um, bones, yeah. Yeah, bones. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, bones. A comic book. Bones is a TV show, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, bones. You know, because they had you know they had kind of a, a slightly antagonistic relationship, but then there was that sort of romantic spark, and and the idea was that you know cat chases the mouse, and he was kind of chasing her. And, um. Anyway, so uh, they, they're street level uh, heroes who fight crime in New Orleans, um, and so <laughs> so it was optioned, and they wrote a treatment of it and sent it back to me, right? And and now I didn't get uh, approvals because mm-hmm. it, that's not the way it worked. That it, that particular agreement, that's not the way it worked, and and that was a a mistake of mine at the time. Um, and they really just kind of brought me in as a, as a, you know, being nice, you know, we'll we'll let you have your say, but we're going to ignore you. (laughs) But here's some of what they did, right? So they reversed the sexes. So, so in the original cat and mouse, uh, cat was a former police officer, uh, who quit the force over, uh, because of police corruption. And mouse was a former criminal 
that he had put behind bars who once she got out she was she was determined to get revenge on him only she discovered that he had a a, a nightlife as a kind of a cat burglar to the rich right um and so that was kind of that was kind of their setup they reversed the sexes so that that cat was uh uh the female right and her name was Catherine. so genius they, move yeah, right. <laughs> but, but she was K-A-T. People just called her Cat. K-A-T, right? Um, he was Mouse. Now, I didn't word it in these exact words, but I said, you know, these are Southern characters. No respectable man, Southern man, is going to want to call himself Mouse. Right. It's just, I just, it's just not. No. And... So they set him up to be a um, a rich philanthropist. I said, so basically he's Batman in New Orleans. They said, well, yeah, this gives him a lot of money so he can have a lot of toys. I'm like, well, that's not that you're missing the whole point of everything. Right. The other thing they did, right? Oh, my gosh. This, this was the one that I just kind of went, whatever. Um, they had underground tunnels all through New Orleans. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you laugh, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, the thing about it is, if you know anything about New Orleans, and certainly everybody like in Louisiana knows, probably most all the way over to, you know, in Texas, and everybody down there knows, New Orleans is underwater. It's, uh, excuse me. It's, it's under sea, sea level. level. Yeah. It's lower yeah. than sea level, right? So everybody knows about the, the cool mausoleums in, in New Orleans and how, you know, all, all the graves are above ground. But they probably don't realize the reason they're underground, uh, they're mm -hmm. above ground, is that if you bury somebody below sea level, guess what happens to them? <laughs> they pop right back up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, no, it, it's it's physically impossible to have these underground tunnels all over all over New Orleans. It's just it's not it's not. Do you know what the response to me was? This is a, this is a great part. The response to me, well, it's a comic book. Nobody cares. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. So we just, need, we just need ideas for things. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. We just we just want to steal your ideas. Yeah. You should have just went Ooh. all. You should yeah, have went all in, man, and just said, "Can we get Dwayne the Rock Johnson to be Mouse?" <laughs> <laughs> well, this was uh, this was Dwayne kind of before he was mouth. he was much. Oh, I got my cameras. Yeah, this full. So I just right. got these. Now these are simply proof copies, right? Um, I just got, I can't, I mean, I can't do both of them at the same time. I get all, you can see, uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit off right there. He'll fix that. But, um, you can see a little bit of the white right there, but he's just sending me the proof copy for what our foil covers will look like. And that's the cat and mouse four. And this was for Kalis. Let's see, these are super hard to photograph. Uh, so this one you almost need to see them moving because so you can see the foil that way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But when you try to when you try to photograph them, they just they don't photograph well. <clears throat> yeah, I had trouble trying to like. I was really wanting to show off Steam Patriots, like uh, online, and I just I could not take a good picture of like how cool they were in person. No, no, they they just don't photograph well. They the video fine because you can kind of you know turn them and get that reflection going, but yeah. Um, but they don't they don't photograph well. But I've been real happy with uh, with with these foil ones. This is what we should have been doing a long time ago. But oh well. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was. At. That's why I asked uh, the question earlier is because I was I was very curious. It kind of leads into something I was going to talk about later. But like uh, considering like the way people are just snatching up comic books now, we're probably at like that the pinnacle of comic book adaptations being snatched up left and right. Mm. Would you? Knowing what you know, like, would it be better or would you be more apprehensive or would you still be game oh. to try it? Or? Well, I'd be game to try it, but I would be super apprehensive. And I'll probably, if, if someone was, um, if someone came to me with a, a, a legit, you know, hey, we, we, this is what we want to do, I would probably have to get a lawyer involved so that I can have some kind of veto power. Mm -hmm. So that if they try to, you know, turn reverse the sexes or turn mouse gay or something like that. I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, I, I would want some kind of veto power that, that 
would allow me to, I don't know, maybe they say you get three vetoes or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, there, I, I just, I, having gone through that in the, in the early 90s, I worry about um, what they might do, you know, to it. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so yeah, well, super apprehensive. Red. But I would be, I certainly I'd be game because, you know, um, e even if it's not what up to kind of my standards, if they do it, you know, a decent adaptation, well, then suddenly there's a whole lot of people who are aware of, of the property that weren't aware of it before. So, right. um, so I think, I think someone would be silly to say, no, I would, I wouldn't consider it at all, but, um, but yeah, I would be super apprehensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear you. That uh, it's kind of a, yeah, especially. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those like I remember the '90s was just the wild west of like adapting comic books. Anyway, like I, I brought up, you brought up like Men in Black. How it's vastly different, and for me, it was The Mask. Yeah, like even though I love the Mask movie, it got me into the comics, and then I was like, oh, this is nothing like the Jim Carrey movie at all, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, and you know, there, of course, there's. I guess that's one of the great debates, but that's one of the things that that sometimes comes up is that, you know, people want to say, oh, well, the movies are doing great, so comic books should be doing good. Well, the problem is, you know, people like the movie, they watch the movies and they like them, and then they go to buy the comic, and then they're like, well, this is nothing like the movie. I, I, I don't mm -hmm. want this. And so, you know, it doesn't really benefit comic sales. Um, the, the the success of the movies doesn't really benefit comic sales, and that that's kind of they, they've had people track that kind of. You get a little blip, right? Your 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 it comes out, and there's a little blip, but then it returns to normal. Yeah. Well, I don't want to throw Marvel under the bus either, but they're really bad. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, they're really bad about just they're they'll be faithful to an adaptation or something, or they'll use source material, but they just will not advertise. That's what it is. No, like, and, yeah, you know they could have people. I think it was Thor: Love and Thunder. They were using like heavy visuals from the comics. Yeah, and mm -hmm. everybody was yeah. like, "Oh, I know what book that is," but they wouldn't like. It's like you could go out and buy this right now if you want. Right, you yeah. anybody. I, that, that's the one that had Topaz, isn't it? From from the Ultraverse? Did it? Uh, I, I was wanting to know about that. I saw that movie and I don't even know. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. That, I, that's the fault of it, really. It's it's very, I don't know. There's a lot to it. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot to it. That's the nicest <laughs> way. That's the nicest way, yeah. So there's a lot going on in that yeah. movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because I forgot, like, uh, when they brought over the Malibu stuff, that, you know, you know, they that folded it into the Marvel because you guys didn't you guys create like a you created like a new infinity gym an infinity yeah mm -hmm. yep um shoot uh the mind gym no not the mind gym which one did we do uh I can't remember what the what it was now I got to work with it for one issue <laughs> but I forgot what it was now it was still cool uh, it's yeah cool. yeah yeah it was neat we got to play with Loki and Juggernaut and um Oh, man. Uh, uh, oh, of course, the Black Knight was uh, part of uh, uh, Ultra Force for a little while. So, they, yeah, it was fun. They him in, in the Eternals. So oh, yeah. the Black Knight? Yeah. 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 Well, um, so did you watch the uh, the Hawkeye uh, miniseries? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Um, they had the Swordsman in that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I figured him out pretty quickly after I, I, I saw him. I'm like, hey, that's the swordsman. And sure enough, I think it was the last episode, he pulled out a sword. And I'm like, I told you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, I, so, okay, so you've you've got, I think, if, just in case, I know we got we just jumped into it, but you used to be the editor-in-chief at Marvel. Yes, yeah. No, 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 not the editor in chief. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I was, uh, I was a, um, I was the line editor for the uh, protectors, uh, for Genesis, for so protectors, dinosaurs for hire, um, X mutants, um, and some random, random stuff. And then uh, when the Ultraverse came along, I went over to become uh, an editor with the Ultraverse. Yeah. When Marvel bought us, they they kind of gave us new titles, and I became um, a managing editor. Which just basically meant I had a lot of paperwork. 
Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my brain's like combine all that stuff. But I, yeah. it was when you had uh, the head at Boom Studios on. Ross Ritchie. Yeah, uh, that was yeah. a great episode. Uh, he, we were talking about we got in the conversation about I had asked about like why he thought what happened with the Ultraverse and everything. Yeah. yeah. And I was kind of ap- I was wanting to know if there was a I'm trying to think of the nicest way to word this because uh, I know I'm going to insult Just like a, a DC fan or a Marvel fan. <laughs> uh, Be a man. Just do yeah. it anyway. Just okay. Spit so it out. you had yeah. people like McFarlane, you know, and uh-huh. Jim Lee. And Rob Liefeld, and they all came out, and they were like, "We're gonna go, we're gonna go independent, we're gonna go heavy independent." And you, again, one of those people. And you look at it now, and all those people have kind of returned to the fold, if not higher up on the chain, and they're still yeah. kind of doing the same things that they were trying to escape from. Yeah. So my question to you is, what is your thoughts on that, or do you see it that way? And if there was an offer to come along from one of the big two to snatch up Silverline, what, what, how would that go down? <laughs> Ooh, that's that. Those are interesting questions. Um, so, so to your first question, I kind of see it that way, right? So you got somebody like, uh, like Todd McFarlane, who has, I mean, he jumped ship and he built his own empire. So uh, if, if he goes back and does some stuff for Marvel or DC, that's just him, you know, doing a little side job. You know what I mean? Uh, so I wouldn't view I wouldn't view him doing. Uh, I don't know if he's, I don't know if Todd's done anything for Marvel or DC. Oh, I just yeah, I guess I should say I, I think he has like his like uh, connections with DC just in terms of their merchandise. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He, you know, all the Todd toys that he yeah. does. Yeah, uh, that's him making money off of DC. So I, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> no way, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So so Todd's built his empire. Um, Eric Larson, although, although I'm not a fan of Eric Larson, Eric Larson stayed the course. You know, he he's been doing his uh, uh, crappy dragon for you know 300 issues. Um, <laughs> just I mean just. Pounding away at it, you know. So, um, so you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of give him kudos for, for you know, staying the course there. Um, Jim Lee is the one, is the, probably the biggest one, biggest name of the bunch who, um, you know, created Wildstorm and then sold Wildstorm to DC and then ended up being the big mucky muck at, at DC Comics. Um, yeah, I'd say <laughs> I'd say he tossed it in and and and, and you know um, went back to, to working for the man. Um, <laughs> let's see, uh, Rob Liefeld, uh, Rob kind of all over the board a little bit. Um, I, hard to say about him. I, I'm going to say yes and no. Um, I think he kind of writes his own ticket a lot of time. He kind of does what he wants to do. Um, so maybe kind of half and half on Rob. Um, I got a lot of respect for Rob, though he um, he has a lot of he has a lot of shade tossed at him. And you know we can talk about it. We can we can laugh Maybe about his you know no feet. You know uh, the thing about it is though, dude sells comic books. You know there's something about his art that makes people just go, I want this, and. That's you know that's magic. I don't know how you I don't know how you you know you, you could throw shade if you want to, but the dude just sells comic books. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other two it's, guys. It's because of the feet. It's because of the feet. <laughs> Nobody wants to look at feet. No one like I don't like feet. So <laughs> I think it's the pouches. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the pouches. Exactly. Right? So many yeah. pouches. Yeah. So many. Pouches. It's, it's so uh, gotta be prepared for anything and everything. Absolutely. So I don't want to put you guys on the spot, but I'm going to. Uh, did any of you read the Civil Line Team Up number one issue? I did not. I'll be honest, I did not. So uh, you talk about the pouches. We did a, uh, and I'm, I'm, I've got my back turned to you because I'm, I'm looking for it here. <laughs> um, we, uh, we did a, 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 a tiny little head nod and homage to the pouches, um, in, uh, in that first issue. The pouches and, are feet. <laughs> no, no, no feet. Dogs with pouches. <laughs> uh, of, like, the, like the Crocs where they put all those pouches yeah. on, on the yeah, Crocs. Yeah, right. like those, those little collectible things that each one's yeah. a little pouch you can open up. 
Well, <laughs> I, your one, I thought I had one here in my box, handy, but I guess I don't. Deadpool's walking around in hey dudes. <laughs> <laughs> hey dudes. <laughs> well, anyway, there was a, there was a panel there. I'll, I'll try to. Um, I'll try. He goes into. He, he, he's all uh, kind of Deadpooled up. He's got bandoliers and pouches all over himself, and he goes into into his first fight with all that stuff on it, and he just he just messes all up. So yeah, um, yeah, that that happens in the in the first issue. But it was if you look at that panel where you first see all the stuff, you're like, man, that's that's right out of the nineties. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Between cable and Deadpool, yeah, I mean <laughs> yeah. yeah, cable, yeah. As far as your other question, um somebody comes along and says, Hey Roland, we want we want to buy everything. So so somebody in Marvel is two different questions. <laughs> yeah, I get well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, Marvel or DC, I, really, right? I would like to tell you, I would like to tell you with uh, with absolute certainty, no. But as you know, money talks, mm -hmm. and uh, if uh, I, I will tell you this, for me to consider, it would have to be a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because it would have to be, it would have to be the kind of money that that means that that you know me or my kids probably don't have to work the rest of our lives as long as we're not stupid you know right uh don't don't have to work the rest of our lives um and, and part of the reason for that is uh, i i love what i do i i yeah. i love this uh I, I love making comics you know i love being able to come on here and show you cool foil things you know uh mm -hmm. he, here's a, I'll, I'll give you a secret this is just the cover the the guts here because this is a mock-up i'm he'll, he'll kill me if i showed you uh ooh, i better not show you <laughs> uh the, the the interior here that has nothing to do with the actual book what he does is he just takes random sheets that he has laying around maybe extras that didn't get you know that they overprinted somewhere and he'll just fold them in so that i can see what it looks like on the cover uh, okay so so this these literally are one-offs because Kay Kalis is not in here and cat and mouse is not in here and in fact this feels like more pages than this one um so I, I love what I love what I do. I, I love Silverline. I love the team that that uh, that we've assembled. Um, yeah. So it would have to be a lot of money for me to say yes. Um, so so my inclinations to you are are, are no. Um, now if someone else comes along. Some of that depends on what they want to do. Um, yeah. You know, it's like we just want to buy it and you go away. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I want to work on my comic books. You know, I, I spent a lot, I put a lot of time and energy and effort into into making these things. I I, I want to work on my comics. Um, if maybe they're like, hey, we want you to come along and and we're just going to give you money so that now you've got a budget and you can say go get. Walter Simonson to do a cover for you or or Jim Lee to do a cover for you. You can afford that, right? Yeah. Um, then then I would absolutely listen to them because uh, I'm sure you guys have talked to enough people and, and you know yourselves. One of the things as a small outfit, one of the one of the biggest struggles you have is money, right? You think of all the things, and I don't mean personally, but but think of all the things that you could do with your business if you just had some money. You know, <laughs> so um, so some of it just depends on, on what they what they wanted to do with it. Um, if they wanted to just buy it and, and make me go away, um, again the answer is ninety nine percent no. But I'm I'm gonna leave that one percent there because I could probably be bought with enough money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, You're here so, first, folks. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and I'll tell you, uh, my friend Lowell Cunningham, the guy who um, who wrote Men in Black, uh, he he hasn't had to work a day in his life since Men in Black. He, he his deal was so good. Uh, Men in Black generates the, the the overall property generates so much money, um, he, even through today that he 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 has not had to work uh, a, a day in his life since then. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? So I got Disney on the phone. Disney's calling me for some reason. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> run, run, run. 
<laughs> run, run. <laughs> now all exclusively underground. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I will say, Bo, you're the first person to ever ask me that. What? The, uh, if, oh. what it would sell if, if someone came along. Well, I'm just <laughs> curious because of the whole, you know, because of the the, the you know the Malibu thing. It was like yeah. it was like what it was what you said. It was you had these two polar opposites, but what happened there was like in between. It was like they brought you in and they. You know, they brought you into yeah. the universe and everything, and then they just dropped it, and they're just yeah. sitting on these characters, and I'm like, right. why? And, and that's what one of my fears uh, about a Marvel would be, is that they would just buy me to get rid of me. And, yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, essentially, that's kind of what they did with the, the Ultraverse. They just bought bought the Ultra, Ultraverse, and they own it. I don't know how long – I don't know when the uh, – I don't know when the rights kind of so if you don't use something you guys know this right if you don't use something the rights revert uh yeah. so, but i don't know how long that is for the ultraverse um you know I, but that would be my fear that they would buy it and then just sock it away so that i couldn't do anything with it myself yeah and i don't want that they have that pettiness about them where I feel like that's yeah, kind of yeah. the way yeah. it would go. Right. You know? yeah. and, and, and then yeah. we live we live in the crazy world now where they have so much money that they buy everything. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. all, all of our they have they have a monopoly on all of the right much all of geek culture. Yeah, you know, yeah. Geek, geek culture is owned by them right now. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. for and, several reasons. Just the uh, I, I always I just keep reverting back to the saturate the oversaturation of stuff. Yeah. And, and you know, and thank God for Silver Line and <laughs> give it a Well, I appreciate that. Um, you know, yeah. So uh, I, I don't know if you we, we've only said it one other place, but I don't know if you guys uh, caught it. Is that we're actually uh, we're actually making the move to Diamond in January? Uh, oh, really? Yeah, nice. yeah. Silver Line Silver Line titles will start to be uh, in comic shops starting January of 2024. So nice. that's awesome. That would be really yeah. nice to just be able to get in my local shop and pick it up. Nothing to get yeah. like buying a Kickstarter. No, no, no. I, I, I listen, I totally get you and I understand. Uh, we, we, we're anxious for that because we, we, we are hopeful that, um, that it will introduce us to, uh, you know, a whole new audience that will say, Hey, you know, what's the Silverline thing here? Please. You know? yeah. And is there any hope in the future to maybe consider a compendiums of, Maybe like big collections. Uh, oh, well, I would be completely so, interested in that because yeah. So how big are you talking about? Like collecting multiple titles or multiple, multi like multiple runs. Like yeah, say, runs say, yeah. Say, say if uh, Cat and Mouse had the equivalent of a um, I don't know uh, what's a good Batman run. I'm trying to think. Nightfall, like night, like mm. Batman had Nightfall. Right. Imagine a cat, a Cat and Mouse variant of that, but then compendium form so because my biggest problem with being a comic collector is having to chase every issue down mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. i want i, I do it I, yeah. I want it all and yes and, and sometimes there's that one that just escapes you and yeah you can't yeah. get it uh the answer is yes yeah we, we're going to do uh we're going to do collections uh of all of them i'm actually even working on a uh, an an uh, of an omnibus for the first volume of cat and mouse which was yes. uh uh 19 total issues long yeah. So that's there's gonna... a lot of stuff. It's it, please don't take no offense. There's a lot of stuff I would love to read. It's just you know I haven't had access to it or just yeah. I haven't found it or whatever. And I would yeah, you can't it. find it. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Or or you find it and you you you, you know uh, someone has slapped a five hundred dollar sticker on it. You know, and yes, you're like, yes. I'm not paying five hundred dollars for that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because they know they know you can't get it anywhere else. That's right. Yeah. 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 So. But uh, well, good. But I'm yes, yes, we that. are. Our, our plan is is for um, for all of the ones that we do, we'll eventually put them in a in a uh, you, you say would we call them collections, uh, but a compendium uh, collection, and and so that people can buy them as a trade at that point in time. Yeah, awesome. didn't awesome. didn't you uh, already do that with uh, Cat and Mouse, the the latest one? Not yet. No, with, no, no. This four... is, yeah, this is this is issue four. So yeah. it, it, and when this one's done, we'll we'll actually we'll do it. Um, yeah, I, th we, I thought I saw that on on the yeah. maybe it was just a Kickstarter. Oh, it was probably the catch up thing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but the, the catch up thing is is just the uh, individual issues. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, the only one we've done it so far with is uh, is Kalis, the first Kalis volume. Mm. Um, 
we have Friar Rush and Twilight Grimm both ready to go. Um, we're looking at, at the possibility of putting them on uh, Indio, Indiegogo over the kind of the holidays. Um, okay. But we haven't quite made that decision yet. So nice. But yeah. Man. I'm I'm very excited for Cat and Mouse. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very excited. I, so, you guys want me to? Uh, I'll share something with you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I've already um, I've already got you, you got to give me a minute to find it. I've already got the next story uh, in the in the works, and I'm calling it Vipers, Cat and Mouse Vipers. My uh, my penciler emailed me yesterday and said, "Hey man, I finished the issue." And I said, like, "Wait, what?" You finished the entire issue already? Um, let me... Uh, I'll have what he's having. I can't do yeah. anything productive. Right. <laughs> Man. Um, We've all had me some of that there, cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had... Uh, I was going to show you the splash page because I think my uh, guy inking it told me he had finished it and put it in the, the Dropbox. Um we could be talking about uh, like uh let's just go ahead and be talking about it in the meantime uh, live on kickstarter right now yes it yep. is yep uh let me present my screen. so uh so i'll give you my pitch uh since you're going to put it on the screen cat and mouse is a story of a guy who gets a telephone call from his ex-fiance and she says hey my kid sister ran away would you go get her and bring her home it's his ex-fiance, so he doesn't really want to do it. But he yeah. is studying to be a police officer, so he decides that he'll go to New Orleans um, only to find out that the kid's sister has been caught up in a human trafficking ring. So he has to figure out how to get the kid's sister out of the human trafficking ring and get her home. And yes, there are ninjas involved. <laughs> Always ninjas. That's, Always that's ninjas. my worst nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know, right? Uh, so yeah, I got to update some of these images now, um, but uh, and, and try to get a good shot of the foil as much as I can. Um, the B cover though, the, that Kalis has been uh, inked and colored now. Oh well, actually, you just saw it, right? Yep. You just saw me hold it up. Um, this is a mini the, exclusive. The yeah, the B that's the B cover, and then the C covers. Um, Cat and Mouse is. I'm still waiting on the inks and colors for that one, and then the the Kalis is being colored, I, and it's probably about halfway done. He showed me progress uh, yesterday. Hmm. And what I always love about you guys is that if you miss down on something, well, you got all this sweet merch you can add on, but you can just yeah. casually add on, uh, uh, you know, issues that absolutely you well, they're yep. still available, so you can do some catch up, which is yes. really nice. Absolutely, yeah. Like and we, it's funny though, we have found that um, since we started putting that on there, that's been pretty popular. Um, I would say that that, and I don't, I don't have the, I haven't crushed the numbers, but I would say that probably for every Kickstarter, we've done anywhere from twenty to forty back issues for for, mm. <clears throat> for each each campaign. That's yeah. Cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. But nice. uh, yeah, it makes it really nice to uh, be able to. You know, I, I it was that I had that with uh Steam Patriots. We've gotten the uh, you know, the preview to do the review and the interview, and it's yeah. like, oh, I really want to get this. And so, I didn't have to worry about not getting issue one because I just picked it up when I got issue two, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's something we try to make sure that we we make clear um, to everybody it's like, look, I know this is cat and mouse number four, but you can still get one, two, and three. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't you can't pledge. You can still get one, two, and three with this. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. So and and you know we, we try to make sure that's clear to everybody. So not to mention, I, I should always mention. I know a lot of people are ad apprehensive, myself included, by Kickstarter. Sure, I get it. Uh, you guys have how many? Have, how many does this make now? You they always get fulfilled. Yes, one gets backed. we have successfully fulfilled 25 campaigns. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a lot. So, so um, we like to tell we like to tell folks that you know, um, I, I we get the apprehensiveness uh, of uh, Kickstarter. We also get hey, I don't know what this is, but the one thing that I you know I kind of 
promises. Hey, you'll get your books and you'll get them when we tell you you'll get them. Unless yeah. something really, 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 really weird happens, um, you, you, you'll you get them. Um, now, I think that you will like them. Uh, you know, pretty sure. You, oh, you're on the, yeah, the stretch goals now. So, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, uh, and I love what the uh, Kickstarter has done uh, for that, letting you add the images over there on the side for those. Yeah. Man, there's yeah. so much original art for this. If you're a, an original art fan, this is an opportunity to own uh, a page from a, a comic book. Uh, yeah, at a I'll very, actually very... say this is uh, it's, it's actually a bit underpriced, to be perfectly uh, the, honest. Yes, these are, these are, they're, they are priced to go. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's really neat to have. Yeah, to be able to just to tag on an original piece of art from the comic that you're, you're reading mm -hmm. at the moment, that's... I'm yeah. going to do, man. And I have to say, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, no, no. Uh, I was going to say, if I'm not mistaken, I think still uh, there's still a cover or two left. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay. Those are, little, those are a little pricier, but I still think there's a couple covers left. So Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there. Yeah, there you go. Three and still, oh. still, that's like incredibly reasonable. You no, because that's not to, not to bring it up, but I mean, like a lot of artists. That's probably their paycheck for drawing it. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. yeah so. Dang. Industry is, it's good. But man, look at all this. Yeah, I, I didn't know it went down this far. <laughs> I should have guessed. It's like, yeah, Kayla's too. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty to add on here, folks. Oh, man, there's so much. I think, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think there was 43 pages. Of, it looks like it's cycling back uh, again. It must have. Some kind of weird Maybe. loop, because you're just going through that again. That's weird. <laughs> um, time warp. Oh, you know what it is? Every time you go to a new. Uh, oh, it's the add-on for the each. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cover B, cover C. I was like, oh, why okay. is it doing that? It's just a, 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 an endless loop. It's like, why? <laughs> but yeah, every time you go to a new times. tier, that's just how much you have on offer. Yeah, it's like no, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. But, no. These prices are insane. Yeah. And and yeah. and if anybody's like nervous, uh, the speed in which you went from fund to actually having comics in hand was pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like next thing you know, I had a book in my hand. Right. <laughs> and they're also packed. You know, it came the presentation so on well. the packing. God. Like yeah. I like you don't have to worry about your comics getting all uh, Oh no way. This yeah. is the worst thing ever. I still have mine here, actually. Uh uh, unboxed? Well, yes. I, I, I don't mind. I feel like I got mine around somewhere. Oh, look at that. Oh, you can do oh. an unboxing now. Ah, Yes, show yeah. everybody what they get. Yeah. Oh. And then you open it oh, up. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, there's nice, nice, and, nice uh, book. Uh, and it's, it's tucked in. Them up. Jeez. It's tucked in a nice little pocket. Oh, yeah, yeah. sweet. Nice little there pocket. And then, then you can take this off and, and see this the issues inside which yep. I, I i have i just i opened it but i uh put it back in here for safekeeping until i put them in so you can file it yeah until i can yeah. put them in in my boards and board bags and borders yeah yeah all i know is I, I spent like 20 some odd dollars and i got like a big stack of comics and I, was yeah, like, I, I know man i bought like extras so because like the i like to hang them up too like I like oh that's I have always buy one for the wall and, um, oh that's cool so eventually I want to have the whole wall just all oh, you know papered in comics <laughs> oh that would be very cool yeah yeah I noticed they started selling the uh selling those like uh it's, yeah like art displays I would yeah. love to do that yeah yeah we um of course we uh, you know I buy the uh the Gemini's that that uh, uh Dustin just showed uh, open in there. Um, and we've had really, we've had good luck with those. I, I would say again, out of the, the 25 campaigns, I think we've only ever had three that we've had to, uh, to replace for damages. Uh, we've had wow. very, very good luck. Um, the weirdest one was uh, uh, one that was uh, waterlogged. It looked like the uh, post guy had just dropped it in a puddle of water and left it there mm. for five minutes. And then and then said, is. "Oh, I dropped the package." And then picked it up and and then delivered it. And of course, all the comics were, you know, uh, I'm like, "Well, man, I'm, I'm sorry." Yeah, so so what we replaced that, but you know, that was that was not 
like that was not so much like our fault, you know. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, I, I mean, I I feel incredibly lucky and fortunate uh, to have done so many you know campaigns and only had to replace you know three of them. That's so, insane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I did share. Uh, yeah, I, I did notice you okay. added something here. Yeah. I don't want to like. Yeah. yeah, what is this? So, so I know we're campaigning for number th for number four of this first volume, but this is my splash page for the next issue. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's some great inking. So, wow. uh, so yeah, these, these pencils are, are by Angelo uh, Conception and um, inks by Jose Fuentes. Um, yeah, same, yep, same guy who did uh, Obsoletes. So I am I am super stoked with this, and he has he has finished with the issue. God, uh, not the inks, excited. the pencils. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I'm having. I was gonna say I'm having a lot of fun with this, uh, as you might imagine, a, a whole bunch of big snakes. <laughs> uh, oh man! So, yeah, and it's all, of course, the theme uh, that I'm working with now for Cat and Mouse is, is human trafficking. So it's all yeah. gonna be it's all gonna be you know about human trafficking in some in some form or fashion. Right. Do you know how many uh, issues you plan on having this arc? This this arc will be four issues. Four issues too. Okay. Uh -huh. Yep. And, and, and I'll tell you a secret. I've already got the next one mostly written, the one after this one. And the next one, the one after the Vipers, I haven't, I don't have it named yet, but uh, it's going to deal with the uh, voodoo. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess you got to, you have to. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. Can't just leave that be. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I just keep looking at the. Yeah. That, I know. I can't wait. The that cross action on that is great. I know it's really, really nice. Um, Thank you for the teaser. You're, yeah. you're very welcome. You're the, you're the first to see it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think uh, people should, uh, in case they don't know, uh, Silverline has their own YouTube channel as well. Well, everything you stream on everything. Yeah, but uh, try. You guys are you. You got your shows, and you can see people working live on this mm -hmm. stuff, which is really fun. While you guys are talking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't always do it, but we, we try to, um, and most of our shows, we try to have somebody cause, uh, you know, we have a mix of writers and artists. So we try to have one of the artists, um, who, one of the, who are able to, to share, uh, what they're work, what they're working on, on the screen so that you can watch them, you know, pencil or ink or color. A lot of times it's inking and coloring, uh, while we're, um, while we're talking. So, yeah. That's fun. Yeah, you guys, yeah. and then you guys have either topics or you do like really fun quizzes or yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah, fun stuff. I, I I like to catch them when I when I got free time. Yep, yep. We uh you we we uh we see you pop on quite a bit, so we appreciate that. If I got five ten minutes and you guys are on, I love it. I love <laughs> popping in. Uh, yeah, we have fun. We we try not to you know we don't get political on on there. We we all have our our uh, as you might imagine, like anybody, we all have our political opinions, but. We try not to. Uh, that's not what our, you know, our streams are about. Our streams are about the comics, so we try mm -hmm. to, to focus on comics, and we try not to, you know, we try not to bash too much. Uh, I, you know, show comes out or something we don't like, we'll talk about it for sure. But uh, you know, we try to we try to stay positive. We we believe comics are, you know, they should be fun. Yeah, and sorry. Nice, but we, no, that's all right. <laughs> so we, we we just try to keep it, you know. We try to keep it fun. No, that, I think that's why I like the most about what you guys do is because a it, there's just the tremendous focus on everybody getting due credit. Like everybody yeah, yeah. is known for what they do on there, and it's there's no one person. Right, it's nice. And uh, the the two, just the sincerity of the uh, sincerity of the work. Because I think even in that last one, you said that you were on your you were talking about how making comics is grueling, grueling work. So you have to love it, but once you start yeah. doing it, you can't do anything else. That's yeah. Yeah. it is very addictive. It really is. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine. I, 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 like I said, I'm sitting on a, a story that I've been wanting to do for a while, and so it's like I, I get that. I know that itch. So but, why are you sitting? Make it happen. I, I know. <laughs> it's really tough. It, it's, it's, I think we're all sitting on like good ideas. Yeah. At least we hope they're good. 
Yeah. But it, it's it, yeah, just actually doing it, getting getting the art. And that I think. Then I think yeah. the no, the knowledge, like I didn't, I wouldn't even know where to start. Like I, like say you wanted to put something out there and you're a you're a nobody. Like where do you yeah. even start? Yeah. No, well, there's a yeah. good question, Roland. Like you get you got some people chomping at the bit. They, you know, indie comics are just insane now. They're like yep. way more popular than ever been. Like some some indie publishers are just uh, in my mind they're just dominating the the big two. So yeah. Yeah. If you got somebody that wants to come into the comics and they want to make a comic, where where would they start? Man, I tell you, there's never been a better time to do independent comics than, than today. Um, I, I, just just what with technology, what with uh, not, yeah, technology to make the books, technology to print the books. Uh, there's just there's never been a better time to do now. Not Marvel and DC, but there's never been a better time to do yeah. uh, 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 independent comics than today. Uh, the biggest challenge, uh, are, are all you guys writers and, and not an artist? Is that what it is? I, well, yeah, yeah, it's a, I'll, I could say I draw, but I wouldn't say I'm an artist. Well, yeah. so, so the biggest challenge is, uh, for a writer is uh, a couple things, right? So the first thing, uh, you know, um, like <clears throat> you got to pretend there's words on here, right? So um, I can hold this, I can hold this, I'll hold up cat mouse. I can hold this image up, right? And you, and, and you can make a, a a decision like that whether you like the image or not right mm -hmm. you can look at it and you can immediately form an opinion i like it i don't like it right what about the story you like that story <laughs> <laughs> so that's the problem that, that, that writers have is that right in, in a visual world uh you can look at a piece of art and you can immediately make a judgment as to whether you you like it or whether you don't like it you can't do that for uh for writing and so the writer's challenge in making independent comics is is getting the artwork done. And I will tell you this, out of everything there is to do making comics, and I'm talking running the Kickstarters, if that's what you want to do, printing the books, getting it, finding and getting an artist to work with is the hardest thing to do. Right. Uh, I, I absolutely love artists. Many of them are, are my good friends. Um, but you know, so many things that they say about artists are true. Um, they, you know, <laughs> squirrel, yeah. uh, they're, they're easily distracted. Um, uh, man, I can tell you stories about, uh, uh, Rob Liefeld studios back in the, the early days. Those guys used to play ping pong all day long and not get any work done. Um, but, but Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, the other thing is sometimes, you know, you might have this story, you know, you think about it. Oh, I've written this story. I really love the story. Oh, and you find an artist and says, okay, yeah, I'll, you know, you make a kind of an agreement, whatever your agreement is. He says, I'll draw it, right? And he starts drawing it and he draws, uh, and it's a four issue story, right? And he starts drawing it and gets an issue done. And he starts the second issue. And then someone else says, hey, man, I, oh, I'd really love you to draw this thing here. It's like, uh, it, it, maybe he's doing a robot story for you, right? And this other person comes along and says, man, I got a, a Kung Fu story. Like, oh, I love Kung Fu. Right? <laughs> now, what they've done is they've dangled that carrot in front of the artist that you're working with. Right? And this is why one of the things I always suggest, right? If you find an artist who wants to work with you, don't try to get them to tell your, you know, dream job, dream story. Right? Find out what they like. Right. So if you start working with somebody who wants to draw big battle mechs and you write a My Little Pony story, they're probably not going to be super invested. Right. They're, they're going to any the next thing that comes along, they're going to go, oh, look, there's battle mechs that I could draw. I'm going to go draw to ba battle mechs because that's really what I want to draw. Right. Um, so if you can find out what they want to draw then um, you can still, I mean, you're a creative writer, right? So you can still write a story that is yours, but encompasses the elements that the artist wants to draw, you yeah. know? Um, it's gonna be but memory. yeah, that's the, that's the single hardest thing. I oh, know, Battle Mech Ponies does sound like a good... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think of like, what is his name, Stratos from He-Man? Yeah. No, no, not no, Stratos, I mean, no what's the horse's good. name? I should know, but Strider. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 
I think we're on to something. I don't make puns. I, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm make them the next write it down. Ones. Never mind. We just lost it. I, I'm writing it down. <laughs> Battle ponies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be sitting in, in a comic store and see it on the shelf, and I'll be like, it's so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, the other thing you talk about, and, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pick on Dustin here for just a minute uh, because. Uh, I know a little bit about Dustin. Uh, the thing about it is, he, here's the difference between, um, you know, one, one, I teach, and one of the questions that, that comes up uh, sometimes is like, okay, so so what's what makes a, a, a writer successful and what makes a writer not successful, okay? Uh, and, and for me, the simple answer is this. The unsuccessful writer is the one who, who's not writing, right? The successful writer is the one who's still writing, Right. They might not have gotten their their magnum opus published. Right. But if they're writing, they're doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the successful writer. And so. Um, so for me, Dustin, um, you just you just got to do it. You know, you just got to, you know, if it's important enough to you, you'll find a way to do it. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a you know. I'm a big, you guys probably know this, I'm a big family guy, right? My family is very important to me. I always make sure that, that, that you know, because they're important to me, I make time for my family, right? Mm -hmm. There, There is time for my family. If I didn't, then they're not really that important, right? So that's usually the question that I will ask to a writer when they say, you know, well, I, I just don't have time to write. I work a job. I got a family. I, I'm like, dude, I, I, I get it. I All those things for me, too. I mean, I, I I totally get it, but how bad do you want it? Do you think you know? Are you you're a sport? You got any you guys sports fans? You're talking now. Uh, eh, no, uh, yeah, that's okay. It's not not a new comics I and mean, sports don't generally. Yeah. <laughs> Although sports, sports is just nerd D and D, it's just you know, with people stuff. So. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm uh, pretty much just a college sports guy. Uh, yeah. But you know the thing that uh, you, if you watch uh, like sports movies, the thing that you almost always see, uh, and even something like Rocky, you know, like how bad do you want it? Are you willing to sacrifice, you know, uh, certain things so that you can accomplish what you what you what you want? You know, um, you might have D and D night three nights a week. Well, okay, are you willing to give up one of those nights so that you can spend that night writing? You know, right. And you don't give everything before, up. Before you even mentioned Rocky, like the speech you were giving, I was like, I was hearing like <laughs> right. Rocky for the Rocky Ford montage music. <laughs> Be prepared yeah. to get punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know what? That reminds me. I think that's what we were all talking about last time you were on the show. Is that it's really. I don't know why, but it's, well, I guess it's just the market, whatever, whatever you want to point a finger at. Like modern comics just aren't, I just don't feel they're as good and you don't get excited as about them as much. Mm. And, but when, you know, we listened to that interview and it, it was just like, wow, I remember why I like comics. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I have lots of, I, I you know, I, I have a, a, lots of problems with, uh, and I'm going to say, I don't want to say modern comics because that includes the stuff that I do. Uh, but I'm going to say modern mainstream comics. Um, I, I, I have a lot of problems with the, the kind of stuff that, that uh, Marvel and DC do today. And, and um, you yeah, know, sure. I, lo lots of theories about, but I think there's a lot of good independent comics being made, you know? Yeah. No, no, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, don't let me. No, when I talk about, Mar I talk about. Marvel and DC. It's just yeah. the kind of, you know, the constant starting over. I know one of the big things that we just talk about. Just I just wish Peter Parker could hit thirty and stay there for a bit. <laughs> right? See Spider Man. But every time he gets married and he's happy for like six weeks, it's like we got to we got to hit the reset button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I guess that's that's probably going to be the eternal question because you look at some something like uh, you know James Bond. James Bond is is uh, you know has been around for the same number of years. Does he really, he hasn't really aged? You know. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know that uh, I think I can't remember if we talked about this on the stream or not, but you know, I, I know there are some people that are, are like, well, if Robert Downey Jr. is not going to be Iron Man, then they need to end Iron Man. 
I, I, and, and, or the Black Panther, right? Um, oh, crap, the guy's name. Um, uh, Patrick Bozeman. Uh, Chadwick Bozeman. Chad, Chadwick, Chadwick Bozeman, yeah. Uh, oh, well, now, now that Chadwick Bozeman is dead, that the Black Panther should die. I disagree completely. I, I believe the characters are more important than the actors. Uh, if Robert Downey Jr. doesn't want to be Iron Man, I listen, I support him. I think he's done a fantastic job. Go find yeah. somebody else. Go find yeah. somebody else. Uh, there are other incredibly talented actors who who can do a good job with what what uh, what Marvel is bringing for the for those particular characters, right? And part yeah. of the reason is is you know I don't think people are just not interested in and the comic books are the same way. I one of the things that you know the question is well why didn't um, why didn't the Eternals do that good? Well, you know what the Eternals comic book didn't do that good either. Right. It's like, I mean, you know, the Marvel Avengers was incredibly popular. Marvel of the Eternals was not. Why did you expect the movies to be any different? Right. You know? Um, Hubris. And, yeah, they they, they got a few big name actors and actresses and stuff. So they're like, oh, well, clearly this should be doing awesome. But no. Yes, no, yeah. it's not. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, to me, I, I would rather see them replace the actors. Uh, you know, with somebody of caliber, but replace the actors and, and keep the characters going. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that was the whole backlash with that second Black Panther. Is I know everybody was really kind of sore, like when they announced, that, you know, he was doing the second one and he was, you know, his passing, they had to stop it. And they're like, well, don't cast anybody else. Mm. And then they watch it and they're like, wow, I wish you'd kept Black Panther in the movie. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, they, they should have cast someone else to to and, and they, again that's the you know Chadwick Boseman's awesome, yeah. but you know he unfortunately has you know has passed away so he's not available anymore. Mm -hmm. So get somebody else. You know, I think my biggest issue with mainstream modern comics is the fact that they'll take a character that's has heritage and we know what that character is and they flip the script and make that character essentially a completely different character yeah. when they could have just made a new character. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah. then everybody says, well, we want to do something new. We want to do something different, you know, that, that represents our modern times. We'll, we'll just make a new character. And then right. they reply, well, we can't do that. Nobody will care. I'm like, have you seen independent comics? Like they do it. Right. Every exactly. Day. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I, I think you're right about that. I think that's kind of the, the prevailing attitude is like, well, if we do that, no one will care. Well, if you do the, what you're doing, no one will care either. And they leave. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys follow sales much at all, but you know, Marvel and DC comics are, are at an all time historical low yeah. in the number of sales that, that, that they have. But we're talking, you know, 80 years for DC, 60 years for, for Marvel, you know, they've never sold, they've never sold as poorly in their entire history as they are now. Yeah. Hmm. And it shows. And I, it, it does. It shows. Terribly. Uh, yeah. But you're right. It's like, you know, I, I, everybody that I know is, is more than willing and interested to, to read and see new characters, mm -hmm. but I don't want to see you take an established character and like you said, flip the script, and it's mm -hmm. like because it's not that character anymore. Well, that's right. you made me fall in love with this character, right? Mm -hmm. The years have made me fall in love with this character, and now you're flipping it and saying that the that all this stuff didn't matter and and it's completely different. And it's like, no, I, I, I'm, I'm I'm sorry, you lost me. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I, I think a perfect example of it would be uh, Batman Beyond. I remember that show when it came out. Everybody was kind of hesitant about it. You know, oh, a kid Batman? That's kind of dumb. Oh, I, you know? first yeah, I, I was like, I just, I, 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 yeah, I just want Batman. And then, but they yeah. made me fall in love with this new character. He's a mm -hmm. new character. He, he's, he does his own thing as yep. Batman. He has his own attitude by being mentored by the older Batman. But still, he's new. And yeah, that was and it wasn't thing. just like Bruce. Here's Bruce Wayne. But if he was in high school, it's like, yeah, no, right. yeah. oh man, I hate those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, if you look at Spider-Man as is, is a, is a great example, because if you look at, at kind of the, the history of Spider-Man comics, uh, it seemed like every couple of months there was a new character uh, uh, introduced in this into the Spider-Man comic because the writers were making up new characters. Spider Punisher, you know, Punisher debuted yeah. in Spider-Man, you know. Uh, and I would say, you know, I would be willing to argue that Punisher is, is pretty successful, you know, but. 
he debuted as a new character in Spider-Man. Why can't you do that kind of thing? So, well, we don't know. Well, okay, so just start making up new stuff. Put them, put them in, in established characters. Don't change those characters, but have them right. interact in the world that you've created and see what we like. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? I think another example is just how they want to make alterations to a character like that, but they, don't, they fail to realize, I think the best example is Miles. Like that's just a variation on Spider Man, but it's not Peter Parker, right? And people can still follow one or the other, or both, which is you know, right? But it, it didn't have to. Let's just make, you know, a younger, a black Hispanic Peter Parker, just to kind of please you know an audience. It's just like, right. why don't we actually do something interesting with a character, right? Yeah, and give it merit. Well, and a lot of times too, and you guys know this. A lot of times the the kinds of changes that they're that they're making and imposing they're pandering to an audience that doesn't really exist you know um, yeah they're, they're pandering they're, they're pandering to uh to a demographic that doesn't buy the comics as can be witnessed in the fact that they make these changes and then their comics don't sell and they don't right. sell because that audience that they're pandering to does not buy the comics and the ones that were buying the comics stopped buying it because they messed it all up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Um, That's what I'm just baffled about. Like, it's still it's still going on now. Like, I think the most recent one I remember them talking about is, like, we're going to we're gonna do a Clark Kent story, but we're going to make it more, quote-unquote, urban and make him black. It's like, you have a black Superman already, and he's his own character. Just yeah. tell that story. Right. That's right. that. Yeah. Why are you... It's like, yeah, it's it's kind of, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's I the, the Asian Superman, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Uh, me, I'm just stuck on, I'm tired of the evil Superman. I've, I did a whole yeah. a rant about, like, I'm just sick of the evil versions of Superman. <laughs> I, I'm you know, still, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, it's just, it's almost like uh, the House of Ideas has run out of ideas. Yeah. 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 You know, Marvel was always the house of ideas, but I don't think they've had a new one in a long time. And at least when, you know, when Marvel first started, you know, they had, you know, Stan Lee and he, and then he could go and steal a bunch of stuff from Jack Kirby. <laughs> Prob and, you know, problem is we don't have any more Jack Kirby. <laughs> right. for Kirby Steve yeah. Ditko's, I mean, yeah, yeah Steve yeah. Ditko's a recluse for a reason. Yeah. 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 No offense to so, Stan Lee. Yeah. Well, Can you imagine think, if someone plundered uh, his house you know, just for all new ideas? It's no, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you, what do what, you think is uh, – do you think it's the, the, the fear of just like we got to keep the brand going? Because I know a lot of things – we don't like to think about it, but I mean a lot of stuff is just to keep the brand in the consciousness of – consumers and it's not actually about the story or anything it's like we just got to keep making stuff to, so people don't forget it well there there is a lot of that in, in, involved and in, in, particularly in some of their their secondary characters uh i mean one of the people used to argue all the time that the only reason wonder woman was being published is because there was so much stuff uh, merchandise uh, of wonder woman sells i mean wonder woman stuff sells t-shirts pillows uh, bedspreads, uh, sheets, uh, to, you know, lunch boxes, all that stuff sells like crazy, right? <laughs> and so, so the argument was that the only reason they published Wonder Woman is so they can continue to, to license all that stuff, right? Um, so I, I have a couple of theories, and one of my theories is this, right? Because we, because we do live in a, in, a, in a day where it is easy to, to be an independent creator and go make your own thing. I mean, just look at, um, Walking Dead, um, Kirkman, yeah, Kirk Robert Kirkman, yeah. Look at look at Robert Kirkman, right? So, dude, uh, ph did phenomenally well. He took his own thing. He owns it. He controls it. He he makes all the decisions, right? And and he's done really really well with it, right? And there are others. We we could we could point out some other independent comic book creators who've, who've done something similar to that. So, if you're writing for Spider Man, and you get this awesome idea for a character. Are you really going to give it to Marvel? Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. or are you going to say, you know what? I'm just going to keep writing this story, and I'm going to take this awesome character idea, and I'm going to go create my own thing over here so I can do it with image. Right. You know? So I, I think I think there's some of that involved because of the, the history that Marvel and uh, more more Marvel than DC, uh, but that the big two companies mistreat the people who create their content. They don't they go and make billions of dollars off the movies and they and they go oh well hey thank you for creating that character for us in the Spider Man book yeah right you know um, here's a pat on the back. Right. Here's a bucks. pat on. Yeah. Here's a pat on the back, and 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 thank you for creating that character in the book that we own, and right. now that we own. So I think there's a lot of a lot of creators now when they go to Marvel and DC, they're like, yeah, I'm not going to create anything new for Marvel yeah, and I DC wouldn't. because they. Own. I'm right. Exactly. It's like, why would you? <laughs> right. Right. Uh, because you're not going to get any anything for it now. Now DC has. Um, uh, I forget what it's called. DC has these these contributor contracts that that hey, if you create something within the DC universe, that you do get paid royalties, and and those are fairly decent. I know several people who um, who have agreements like that, and they they say they whenever the toys sell, they do really well. You know, it's like oh, I got me a you know the the, the this toy sold uh, you know this last week, and I got me a nice little royalty check. You know. <laughs> so, uh, so DC is pretty good about that. Marvel needs to catch up. Yeah, uh, but that's that's probably my my biggest theory uh, um, as to why that happens. My second theory is um, be, because I don't think most of the editors that they employ today really know what they're doing. Hmm. I, I think most of the editors. I mean, I, I saw a comment. And I can't remember who it was. I saw a comment from an editor this goes back two years ago or something like this they were just getting ready to take over a new title at marvel and they were having an interview and um the interviewer said something about uh, the character and they said oh i don't know anything about the character uh i've never i've never read anything about the character but i'm going to go do all my reading this weekend so that i'm like that is not who you want to put in charge of the book. <laughs> yeah you don't want to put that person in charge of the I book. get this I'm done in sorry. one weekend sure Right. Yeah. I, and it's just like, come on. They are not Ford yeah. Lift certified. Yeah. <laughs> <You> know, like. <laughs> yeah. So uh so I think there's a lot uh, yeah, I know I do know there are some good editors up there, but I, I, I think the, the the majority of them uh don't know what they're doing. Uh, maybe they know what they're doing, but they don't know the characters or the history or whatever. I, I don't know. But yeah, I, I I think that there's a lot of problems stems from the editors too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's gotta be a terrifying job. I think of just like getting a writing job. Like somebody says, it's, it's almost like a weird nightmare of mine. It's like, Hey, you, you want to write a Batman story? It's like, wait, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I love the character. I mean, so just, much, just, I just look at how they treated Kevin Smith. Yeah. When he wrote his Batman story and it's, it's just like, uh, I talked to well, a firefighter obviously. who experienced this and then tried to write that in the Batman and they all got pissed at me. It's like, okay. <laughs> well, well, yeah, the flip of that coin is that uh, like he, he, you know, the whole masterverse stuff too. Like he, like everybody was busting him. Like he didn't know. Uh -oh. What am I fuzzy? Well, Cut out yeah. just for a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just talking about Master the masterverse stuff about how, you know, he basically didn't know anything about he man, but he took that job. Yeah. 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 I think see, there's that, a lot of a lot of that going on. Yeah, and that's the problem, right? Yeah. Um you you, you, you want to hire someone who who uh, they don't have to be expert expert, but you want to hire somebody who at least has heard of the character. Yeah. You know? well, a, a, a good example is the films. I mean, going back to, I hate to go back to Love and Thunder, but uh Taika Waititi, you know, he made several comments about he does he doesn't know the character, doesn't like the character, and I remember I, if I, this is paraphrasing, but he said, "I'll wreck your like your lore in a minute or something like that." He made out some big yeah. statement, you know, like I'm like, come on, they man. don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like and, yeah. He, and they take pride in ruining something that people have grown up loving, and that's yeah. that's sad. I don't think that's, you can that take is sad. You can take the job too and be respectful. Like I, th I think about like Edgar Wright. He had never heard of Scott Pilgrim, but he put in the work, right? And he hung out yeah. with Brian, with Brian and everything. And he like he wanted to bring that 
that love, and I think he succeeded. Like, I, yeah. that's all it takes is a respect for it, even if you don't understand it. Like, put exactly. It in yeah, yeah, I, I, absolutely. Yeah, I have a good friend who uh, is a Superman fan, and why I don't know, but he's a Superman fan. Uh, <laughs> and, and we talk about the uh, we talk about the the modern uh, the modern films that represent Superman, and he's like, yeah. you know, he goes, the problem is they keep hiring people who don't like Superman. And so yeah. we get these films of Superman of them trying to make these changes because they don't like the character. I said they need to hire someone who likes Superman, yeah. someone who comes in and says, "Oh, this is a great character. I want to make this film." Not someone who comes in and says, "Oh, I don't like this character, so let's change it so that it's not so cheesy or whatever." <laughs> and that's a yeah. problem. No, we yeah, we actually did a whole episode about the problem with Superman and what, what we want, like especially with this new one. I'm trying to get my hopes up with a good Superman story that's not yeah. the animated series. I, th I think like that's pinnacle yeah. Superman storytelling. Yeah. <sighs> we, well, we, okay. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Zach. I was gonna say we don't want to get cavilled, you know. If you <laughs> yeah. right, you, yeah. You show up, show up, yeah. really, really like real happy about what you're doing, and you love it. They're like, get off set. Just leave. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Just get out of here. How we dare don't... you? I like How him dare you care about this character? I know, what you, right? What do, you, what do you mean you read the books? <laughs> <laughs> there are no books for this. <laughs> That's cheating. Go away. Right. Yeah, there. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm still. I'm still butthurt about them changing truth, and justice in the American way. I'm still butthurt yeah. about that. Yes. Yeah. I. I feel like. Come on. Man. Same. Yeah. 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 I just think yeah, that's why I liked it because it was. Uh, it's. I think that's uh, just a short, like we were talking about, it's just everybody's so cynical nowadays. So Superman does not fit in there because he's just unbelievable. It's, you tell me there's somebody that just wants to do good all the time and he's not out to like make money. I don't, I don't believe that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, it's like, that's well, sad, that's isn't it? A, yeah. Well, it's like, yeah. Well, it's like a paradox. You, you say that he doesn't fit in, but we've never needed that more than ever. Yeah. Right. You know, and I think. Yeah. Man, yeah, if you don't like Superman, roll it. Go, go read Superman versus the Elite. Trust me. <laughs> or listen, I, I, I really, really, really like classic Superman. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 probably some of my favorite uh, animated Superman are the Fleischer cartoons. Matter of fact, yeah, uh, oh, I got man. like three or four CDs of them right up there. DVDs, <laughs> sorry, not CDs. Uh, my wife keeps trying to throw them away because she's like, "You've got m m this multiple times." I'm like, "Yeah, but." I I need this one too. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Flesh ones are amazing. Oh man, they're so good. They're so good. Um, yeah. So that that's yeah. So I don't I don't hate Superman. I just I, yeah, there's so no. Much it's one of those things I get it. If somebody says I don't like Superman, it's like I get it. <laughs> but you're just not looking at good Superman. But I just I get it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just because they don't treat him very nice, you know. No, and no. and, and I, I think some of it is they don't they just they don't know what to do with him. But I think it goes back to what you were saying: is that he's such a good guy. I think so many of them don't know how to do that. They're like, I don't get a good guy. What does that mean? Well, yeah, he doesn't have yeah. a dark a dark CD backstory or anything. Like, no, yeah. it's just yeah, he comes from. Tragedy, I don't but... understand how it, it cannot be dark and CD if you don't think about it. Like. I mean, his planet blew up, and you know, yeah, that's, the last that's, one. What, that's what's the great. Life. I remember when we pulled that example up. It was he said the first the, the first two people I met on a planet that I'm not from helped me, yeah. right? Like, how could I not love this entire planet, right? And I'm like, that right there sums up Superman. Just do right. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, if you can't if you can't understand that, yeah, just pass it off to another writer, for maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure there's another daredevil or something you can hear right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's he's always, he's always, he's always off brooding, you know, somewhere. Right. <laughs> he's canny. Uh, he has to brood. Right. Yeah. Uh, does anybody else have any questions that they didn't get to or, cause I just, I'll, I'll pose one more just in case, oh. but I was just going to say, uh, yeah, I have this up. And I think we've talked about it already. Oh, already. Yeah, I think we're in. I mean, so, like, yeah. But here it yeah. is again. So yeah. just make Thank sure you. you go back this and and check this out. 
you should, you should. <laughs> yeah, you can get the whole story. So uh, this is the the uh, for Cat and Mouse. This is the final uh, issue of the story. So um, and if you missed one, two, and three, you can you can absolutely get them all. Yep. Uh, and it won't break. It won't break the bank getting. Um, they're. They, I mean, these are these are a little pricey because they're special. Uh, but um, but yeah, it, they're all pretty pretty reasonable. You know, to get all of them. So opening up a new tab. Yeah. So, <laughs> and and because you guys and have talked bank. about things that we love, uh, one of the things that I've been doing in Cat and Mouse is uh, I brought back. The good old fashioned letters page. Oh, oh really? Nice. Uh huh. So that is awesome. And I, I will continue to do that for as, uh, as long as I can, I reckon. So <laughs> and this is the this is the classic. Uh, this is from the first volume as well. I just uh, snagged that and just brought it forward. So uh, you'll find this in in the first volume. Now our first issue didn't have letters, uh, obviously, but issues two and three uh, have letters. Um, here's the ones for two. And where, did you, I, where did you call them from? Um, most of the times people send me emails. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or if I see someone post a little something about, uh, like I, I saw one and one person did uh, post something on Twitter and I said, Hey man, if you want to, you know, if you want to expand that a little bit and turn it into a letter, I'll, uh, I'll use it in the book. Okay. Um, <laughs> but what I try to do is put like the cover, uh, a cover for the next issue. So this is two. This was the cover. Uh, this was the Kickstarter cover for number three. And then of course, when three came along, then um, this I put the cover in there for number four. And as you can see, this is the cover. So, so you get a a little preview of the next cover as well. So. That's cool. Yeah, I, I love letters pages. That was something I always loved as a, as a, a fan. I loved uh, reading them, you know, yeah. to see to see if others thought kind of uh, what I thought. And right. So, um, so yeah, I decided. Uh, you know, Cat and Mouse had a letters page uh, on the first volume, so I was like, man, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it now too. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. Does it? Uh, do your comics have those ads for the? You know, how to get in shape, be a muscle man for, in like ten days. You know. The, the, these do not, but when we go to uh, Diamond, we are looking at uh, selling ads, and uh, ex it, it, we're looking at increasing the page count a, a little bit so that we can, because obviously I don't want to take away from the story, yeah. but we are looking at selling ad space uh, for those extra pages, so who knows? There may be... There may be a, a, a build a better body, build a better beach body. We need this X-ray specs. Put us put us yeah. down for a uh, for a, an ad in the in, in that when it happens. We'll, we'll oh, seriously, excellent, excellent. I'll I'll write it down then. Well, a, yeah, we'll do a little cartoon. We'll do we'll make Zach be the muscle man, like you jerk and kick and say, <laughs> <laughs> "What a loser! What a dude! Uh, read uh, comics, huh?" This guy clearly doesn't read silver, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's something that we've kind of talked about, and um, uh, when we when we when we do diamond in, in 2024, we're gonna we're gonna add ads, add some ads. So, oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Nice. Well, okay. So I wanted to, if everybody's done, I wanted to close out. I think it's a good. You got another hard question for me, don't you? Yeah, well, I just it's uh, uh, picking your brain. Uh, what is it about comics over any other medium that you that you like writing for? What is it about it that you know you, you have you don't write screenplays, books? What is it about comics? And what was what was the thing that kind of cinched it when you were where you're like, oh, I, I want to do this. Uh, well, I, ha I have written some prose, uh, so I don't want to say I haven't written anything. I've, I've got a there's a I've got a novel available on uh, Amazon, I think, uh, and I have two more that are unpublished. I I intend to publish them one day. Um, they're both superhero novels, as you might imagine. Um, but uh, one of them was actually written for um, my master's thesis. Um, so I, I'm kind of most anxious to get it it published. You know, I, I think what it is about comics that I like um, is that comics allows you to, well, I, I mean, 
number one is visual, right? I, I love the art in comics. I do. I know that I'm a writer and, and, you know, I should say, well, I love novels and I do, but uh, I, I love looking at the artwork. I, I can just, you know, love sitting here looking at the, I, I love the process of it. Mm. Um, I can write a script and then it will go to a penciler. And then that penciler will take the words that I've written and they will breathe life into it by simply drawing something on the page in their pencil. Mm. And, um, Sometimes it's exactly as I, I envisioned it. Uh, sometimes it's kind of like I envisioned it. Sometimes it's, well, I didn't really quite see it that way, but, you know, okay. Um, and, of course, the, that, that's the pencil. And then, uh, then the inker will take that and, uh, you know, create the depth and the shading and all that stuff. And then the colorist comes along and, and gives it that vibrancy. Um, there's a collaborative process that i love to be involved in i love to be a, a part of um and i've had someone tell me oh well you can do that as a as a, a screenwriter and that may be so but every person i ever knew who wrote a screenplay or any kind of script said they wrote it and then someone all, other people took it and changed it and and they didn't have anything to do with it after they they, they got paid and mm -hmm. they moved to go and um well, you know, I guess there's something to that. You could say, well, I worked, I did my job, and then, you know, I, I sent it forward. Um, I, that, that, that's, I, I, that's not me. Um, I, I, like the, I like being involved in the production of it, seeing it go from, you know, concept, um, uh, seeing it go from, um, uh, you know, battle ponies to a full-fledged comic book. You know, yeah. I um, I read that. <laughs> <laughs> patent pending. You should have said patent pending. You should have said. <laughs> so, um, Shut and, it and down. There's some, there's <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's like, man, I wish we weren't live. We could actually bleep that out. <laughs> we, could, we could edit this in post, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there's something else I like about uh, comics, and I, I think part of it is is it goes to the writing as well. As a consumer, there there's there's some things I think about comics that that gives them strength that the other media doesn't have. So so when you go see a movie or you watch a television show, you consume that based on how the director wants you to consume it. OK, he, he, he's taken uh, information, a script, right? And well, you might have written it, uh, but he determines I'm going to spend 30 seconds in this scene. I'm going to spend, you know, five minutes in this scene. The director determines that as a reader for a comic book, you can decide I'm going to spend 10 minutes looking at the artwork on this page or I'm going to spend 10 seconds looking at it. You and I can read the same. Let's just assume that we read the same speed, right? You and I can read the same comic, and yet we may there may be you know 15 minutes difference between the time you finish and the time that I finish because you know, and I'm just gonna say I'm not picking on you, but I'm just gonna say me because I want to sit there and look at the artwork, yeah. whereas you know some some people may just you know kind of flip through and read the words. I do that with manga, right? Well, there's nothing to look at here. Let me just flip, right? <laughs> Uh, sorry, that was a cheap stab at manga, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> but, <fire>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of the biggest DBZ fans on the planet. <laughs> um, but you know that, that as a consumer, you're the one who gets to determine what your experience with the comic book is, right? Do you want to do you can do you want to spend five minutes reading it or do you want to spend 30 minutes reading it you know uh and, and that's that's totally up to now uh, yes of course the writer has some um uh, some c control there if there are no words for you to read then you're gonna you're gonna go through it pretty quickly um this is part of why i'm a big believer that that all comics all your panels should have words because um if a panel doesn't have a, a words in it your reader tends to, to skip it and move quickly past that panel. 
if there are words in it, they have to stop and read them. And their eye, even though they're reading the words, their eyes are looking at the artwork around it. So they actually spend more time. Yeah, you're like, well, duh, of course they spend more time they're reading. Yeah, but but they're spending more time looking at the artwork as well because you're you're forcing them as the writer to read those words and stay in that panel. Because but if there are no words there, they just move right, you know, they move right through it. Yeah. So that's why I'm I'm a big whoop, we lost Zach. Uh, that DB, that DB man, you should have made a joke. You couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I heard I heard thunder in the distance. I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> uh, Hang so, five more minutes. If you see me yeah. pull away, I am. <laughs> yeah. Name one uh, of the mecha ponies after me, at least. <laughs> 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 uh, so did that make any sense no no no, no yeah okay. yeah definitely yeah, yeah. I, I think that's probably why i think of uh i think the example i was thinking of is the ending of uh the killing joke how there's no words there and people just didn't interpret that ending they just like oh there's just puddles right yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. they just they just breeze right through it yeah and I know, uh, you know, it makes a lot of people mad. Uh, I say a lot of people. Anytime you're on social media, a lot of people get mad, right? I've yeah. posted th those kinds of thoughts before, like on Facebook. And, oh, man, the people come out of the woodwork. Oh, no, they're great comics. Comics don't need – the artist is not doing – you're not doing your job as a writer if you have to have words. And I'm like, you know, I read picture books when I was a kid, and, and I moved on from picture books. <laughs> right. Me, if, if you ain't got any words, you're just a picture book. You know, so I, I like some I like some meat with my sauce. You know, yeah. I'm a uh, guilty of if if there's like an actor or a voice that I really associate with a character. When I go back and I read the comics, I hear that that, <laughs> that actor's voice. Like sure. like example, Kevin Conroy is. You know, when I read it's Batman, Batman. It, it's, it's yeah. Batman. That's what I hear. That's yeah. the voice I hear in my head. You know, yeah. do you do that as well? Do you, oh yeah, like, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. There there are some that you just hear. Uh, so, so my dream cast for the, and, and this is dated some, my, my dream cast for cat and mouse in the nineties was Nick Nolte and Meg Ryan. Right. Oh, okay. That, that's yeah. who I wanted to be cat and mouse. And so whenever I, I read volume one of cat, and, I wrote the darn, darn thing, right. Whenever I read the first volume of cat and mouse, I hear Nick Nolte's vo voice, like, <laughs> man, see, now I'm going to. I, I now I hear forty eight hours. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get out of here. We gotta go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would still actually watch that movie now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 of course, you know, this again. This goes back to the nineties when they were, you know, considerably younger. Uh, and, you know, Meg Ryan was hot back then. I haven't seen Meg Ryan in, in years, but Meg Ryan was hot back then, and. And, uh, you know, Nick Nolte would have made the, the perfect, you know, kind of slightly disgruntled ex-cop, you know, yeah. turned cat burglar. And, yeah. So, God. That, that was my dream cast for Cat and Mouse in, you know, 92, <laughs> 93, 94. Well, well, I'm simultaneously glad and, you know. No, yeah. it, it's okay that it didn't happen if it was going to be the other way. Yeah, because he would have been called Mouse. Yeah. yeah. You know, he would have been called Mouse in their version. And, yeah, I, I just can't see that. <laughs> I can't see Mouse area. talking like this, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go, trying to make his way through his billionaire tunnels. Oh my gosh. Uh, New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. What a what an awesome <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> and the thing about it is, I, I have the I have all that paperwork still. So sometimes people go, oh, I don't believe you're rolling. And it's usually in my drawer. You, you can probably hear it. It's empty. <laughs> Because I I haven't un completely finished unpacking yet, but that's usually where I keep the, that that failed, uh, the, the, all the notes that they sent me, the treatment and all that stuff for for the original cat and mouse. So that I could usually just pull it out and say, here it is. <laughs> yes. What a what a perfect day to be able. Let me let me pull out this this exact moment when you said this thing's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you said this stupid. You remember this? Thing? <laughs> it's right, right, here. right here. Oh man, yeah, yeah, it, it was bad. So. Uh, well, I'm glad. Boy, I'm glad it didn't happen. Yeah, me too. Oh, me too. 
We're off to uh, we're off to better. We should uh okay, so Kickstarter's live. It's got ten more days, I believe. Uh it ends on I don't know. You're asking you asking me to do numbers. Um I don't have my it ends on not this yeah. Sunday, but next Sunday. So yeah, okay. I'll try to get to the Kickstarter page. Where is my Kickstarter page? Ten uh, days to go. Ten days to go. Yep, there you go. Um, yeah, it looks like we're at 54 backers with 18.55. So uh, we're at yeah, about well 50. Over yeah, a little, little over halfway. So. Uh, so yeah, so whoever's uh, listening, you guys get over there and, and uh, give it a peek. Um, you do not have to be aware of the first volume of Cat and Mouse to uh, appreciate, enjoy, and or understand this volume. Um, there are characters from the first volume that are in the second volume that probably if you read volume one, you will appreciate more, but you, you there's not... It is not required reading for for volume uh, for this volume. This is volume two. Uh, it is not required reading. You can you can pick up from the first issue and and, and move forward. So yeah, I always appreciate that in comics too. That's the, yeah, um, the golden standard. Like you shouldn't have to read everything. <laughs> nope, you should not. You should not have to read everything. Even though I want it. Oh, uh, okay. And uh, you guys, uh, <laughs> social media. Your silver lines everywhere. I believe. Yep. Yeah. We're on we're on all the all the social medias. Uh, we just look for Silverline Comics. Uh, we like as you mentioned, we stri- uh, stream on uh, on YouTube. We stream on Twitch. We stream on Facebook. Um, we we run reruns every night uh, on the Madness Network um, at like one a.m. Uh, so if you missed our streams from two years ago, just tune in. We're running them all back to back to back to back to back, just like. Uh, you know, you can see the uh, the old uh, reruns of uh, Gilligan's Island. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's good. Um, I, I, I'm not worried. I, I know everybody's it's going to get back, but I, I'm, I'm still excited regardless. And I'm glad. And yeah. we were all excited for you to come back on. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate that. I, I, I enjoy talking to you guys, and uh, I'll say it while I still see your live button up there. The, you, you want uh, anytime just just holler at me i'll come back and the one thing uh, I, I think i've proven to you guys is i, I love talking comic books and and you got to <laughs> shut me up so <laughs> <laughs> i love it man uh, yeah uh, yeah we we've we've talked about it all the time anybody from silver line you, you, we got to see yeah. you whenever you need yeah i know you and i swapped messages about uh, uh at one point in time and i think i can't i think that was right before my move about maybe setting up some kind of regular silver line thing i'm i'm Absolutely yeah. gone hope with that. Uh, probably ought to turn you over to uh, maybe to my wife to let her uh, try to coordinate that with you okay. uh, better than me trying to, to wrangle cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you've got to make the comics. We, we can't we can't distract you. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to wrangle uh, wrangle artists and stuff. So uh, and now that I found out that the, the next issue of Cat and Mouse is penciled. Uh, he caught me. Listen, guys. He caught me totally unaware. My my personal uh, agenda is to, if you're drawing my comic, and I know you're getting close to the end, I'm gonna write the next one so that when you finish, I will hand you the next script. Right? <laughs> you got so, nothing. So so I got nothing. He called me. He called, I mean, it's plotted out. The, the whole arc is. I, I yeah. plot my entire arc, right, and then break it into into to chunks. Uh, but I don't have anything. It's like, what? What do you mean you finished already? Holy crap! <laughs> so, well, to be fair, that's most work than a lot of comic book and movie writers do. Like, oh, you, yeah, you've actually got it planned out. Yeah, I do. I do have it <laughs> so planned that's out. More, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I kind more of than have... the last Star Wars had. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just well, be bopping and jazzing. I got to tell you, I kind of have to because there's some, there's a couple of long range things that I want to do, and I have to plant those seeds mm-hmm. now. So I have to kind of plan out exactly where it's going, and so. Those seeds are being planted that, that I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that I get to write, you know, another 20 issues of Cat and Mouse. Um, but so those seeds are being planted to happen a couple of issues down the road. So. Love it. Yeah. Making everybody look bad by planning. I, 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 know, I know. You should probably write a George R.R. R. Martin and be like, listen, 
<laughs> this oh, is called dude. this is called this is called a calendar. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's oh, been around for for uh, centuries. <laughs> well, uh again, thank you. I'm going to play uh the promo to play us out. Okay, uh, cool. And then we'll do the credits. Uh but uh and I'll mute everybody and pull everybody out. But thank you again, Roland. Thank yeah. you so very much. I appreciate it. Enjoy yeah. talking to you guys. Yeah. yeah thank you, you too. so much. Hi, and welcome to our Kickstarter. Cat and Mouse is the story of a guy who gets a telephone call from his ex fiance and she says, Hey, I want you to go get my kid sister. She's running away from home. Well, it's his ex fiance, so he doesn't really want to do it. But he's studying to be a police officer, so he decides that he will go to New Orleans and see if he can't find her. So he goes there only to discover that the kid sister has been caught up in a human trafficking ring. So he has to figure out how to get her out of the human trafficking ring and get her home. And yes, there are ninjas involved. We like making comics. Tell all of your friends. Thank you, and remember to make mine Silverline.